Wake up call, wake up call, wake up call. Can't afford any sleepy heads for this one. Is this is a very important announcement. Sources like cdc.gov report one in three adults don't get enough sleep. I am here today to report why that could be and the problems that this can cause and how to actually solve these problems. Thankfully, I have a bit of help on this one. Starting off with healthysleep.edu, sleep, we're not really sure what causes it, but one theory that we have is inactivity theory. This theory suggests that sleep has been adapted upon through a process in which there may have been shown that a species has had increased survivability staying still at night. Though many scientists don't believe in this theory because as far as we know, we would probably prefer to be conscious at night. Who knows what could lurk around just to eat us. Our next theory is energy conservation theory. This theory is supported by the fact that we use 10% less energy in our own sleep. So a lot of scientists have shown it a favoring to this one, but it's been quite a bit of popularity with retroactive theory. This theory suggests that we sleep to cause a internal growth inside of our own body, internal healing. Though we kind of do do this outside of sleep. So there was one more theory that scientists have really taken a popularity towards. This is brain plasticity theory. This theory suggests that we use sleep to cause brain development and brain growth. Now, our next source is APA.org. Now, they have realized the many problems that happen when we are lacking sleep. One of these problems is problems with our memory or problems with our metabolism and increase in stress hormones. It's very important that we get sleep and it is recommended that we get at least eight hours of sleep every night. But researchers like William Dimmitt has showed that someone who gets about four hours of sleep for two weeks is the equivalent of someone who hasn't slept at all in three days. And this is a very different phenomenon. He has found out that this is due to having a sleep debt, a sleep debt in which we are like getting a debt like how it is when we're paying for college funds or anything like that. If you owe money, it builds up with interest and this is being shown with our sleep too. So how can we remedy this? One of these tips that we have is just to keep the bed for sleeping alone. Evidence has shown that doing homework or other activities in bed will make the brain less likely to think that laying in bed is to fall asleep. Our next tip is to only change our sleep schedule to up to 15 minutes at a time. Going past 15 minutes can be very stressful on the mind. It's, we're going by a schedule. Our brain is used to having a routine. And only go to bed if you are tired. Going to bed and if you're not tired kind of points into the first thing. It goes out of our schedule. We know to go to sleep if we're tired. And simply trying to make yourself fall asleep will increase just the stress and you'll just overly think about trying to fall asleep. And our next thing, it's not always our fault that we're having problems with our sleep, but simply declutter your schedule if it's needed. It has shown that if you have a schedule too busy, well, you're gonna lack a lot of sleep. And if you notice that none of these tips are helping, sleep disorders are becoming more common every day. And it's probably necessary that we see a sleep specialist. So sleep is something that we can often underrate or forget. So let's recap of what I went over today. So WebMD went over an activity theory, energy conservation theory, and the many other theories of why we may end up sleeping. APA.org explored the consequences of not getting enough of this vital function. And our next one, advice to remedy sleep depression. Well, I didn't just say sleep depression, but sleep deprivation. And so yeah, it's very vital that we get all the sleep that we need. Thank <laughs> you.